of project b team um today is currently saturday february 18th that makes it that it's one that means that it's one saturday exactly before fuel fest um so the goal today is basically gonna be to finish buttoning up gabriel's car it's running and everything but there's just a few minor things that i need to uh basically finish buttoning up um, his car is going to take priority over my car. My car has a few things that it needs to get done, but they don't have to get done. The car is fine to drive there and be showcased at the way it is. But if I make the time to be able to fix it, then uh, we're going to go ahead and get it fixed. So the main thing is going to be to get this car done. And uh, so we can go ahead and uh, take it for a drive and get the tune on it. That way it could be 100%. So go ahead and pop the hood, see what we got left on the motor here. So on the motor side of things, <clears throat> valve covers in place. I just had it in there to cover some stuff up. Um, we need to put the new valve cover gasket in here. That was the reason I had taken it out. And uh, we also need to, he brought the, uh, the Skunk 2 valve cover hardware. So I need to put that on there. I already swapped out the center studs um, because since I knew that this was gonna be a thing, I went ahead and did that um, beforehand um, so I could get the cams and everything torqued down. So the only thing I have to do now is just set up these corner ones and swap it from the studs to the bolts or whatever and then put the cover on here. But that's pretty much it. That's minor stuff. I'm not worried about that. Um, other thing that we have to do is there's no oil in here. There's no coolant in there. Well, there's no coolant in the radiator. There's still a little bit of coolant left in the system. I want to fill that up with water and flush it out. And um, also... I drained the oil out because we we're going to do an oil change, so I still got to take the old oil filter off. The main thing that I got to do under here, though, is I do have to change over his uh, oil pressure sensor, which is sitting right there next to that fitting. You probably can't see it, but it's basically right there. Um, with the oil filter out, it would make it a lot easier to do, so we're going to try to knock both out at the same time. And then the only other thing that I need to do is... Um, in here i hope you guys can hear me because i did notice i'm talking a little bit lower and it is pretty windy out today but so basically um i was trying to put new pins into the computer i think this is for obd1 so it wouldn't bolt in it wouldn't uh plug into his harness so what i ended up doing was just putting the vtech wire right here um which is on the obd2 a side that is going to be a8 <clears throat> i'm not sure i'm not 100 percent sure what that's going to be on the obd1 side um but that is where the vtech signal is from the ecu so we're just going to go ahead and leave that there for now and uh before i go ahead and solder it and tape it um or seal it up permanently um i do want to just leave it like that take it for a test drive and make sure that that works and uh i also need i wired in his wideband there but i never soldered it so i want to go ahead and take the chance to solder that too and uh aside from that there's not really much else that needs to be done here other than taking the car for a drive taking it and uh putting a a tune on it making sure that uh everything works properly with the type r cams and stuff that i put in here and then uh hopefully we have enough time to be able to mess with my car over there and the only thing that i have to do with that car is um it's got like a slight leak from the oil filter adapter thing. And that's because one of the fittings isn't sealed like 100%. So basically all I have to do is I have to take that out, put a little sealant on it, put it back in. And that's pretty much it. Um, oh, and my torque mount. Um, I guess from having solid mounts, I'm not sure what the deal is. But like one of my uh, torque mounts on the bottom of the trans, not the torque mount. The bolt that goes to the T-bracket that bolts into the transmission, the bottom one has started to back out a little tiny bit. So I want to take that guy out, put a little bit of Loctite, like blue Loctite, and just push it in and make sure that that's solid. 
um but that's pretty much it it's real real minor stuff on my car too oh actually i'm lying one of the things that i need to do on that car is i need to change the clutch master cylinder now the clutch master cylinder has been acting kind of funny this is why i say it's not really something that has to get done because the car drives fine and when it does act up on me i do know how to bypass it and get it going not a big deal for me but i do have the clutch master here so it'd be nice to go ahead and swap it out problem is that i started getting some uh clutch fluid brake fluid leaking from the cylinder down into that corner of the firewall it's not really too visible but it's kind of faded out the paint in that corner um and then when you wipe it down it's taking some of the paint off and the brake booster got some overspray from when the car got painted and when we painted the engine bay we never really covered that corner um so one of the things that i want to do is i want to go ahead and pull the uh the master cylinder off the brake booster slide the brake booster and the clutch master cylinder out paint that corner and then put everything back in so that way that corner is nice and clean um so yeah so with that being said let me stop wasting time talking on the camera let me get to work on gabriel's car so i can get his car done and out the way and i can work on my car and hopefully have both these cars done by tomorrow um i want to leave it to where basically all i have to do is just detail these cars thursday and friday and we'll be ready to go uh to the show saturday morning so let's get to work all right y'all so just a quick little update it's currently i want to say like nine o'clock 9 30 ish uh we've been moving forward on gabriel's car all day um and the day's not over um we're gonna keep pushing i'm gonna keep pushing to try to get everything done on this car um so the valve cover and everything is already done you can see covers on spark plug covers on and the whole new skunk 2 hardware kit and everything is installed it looks really good really sleek really clean so that's all done uh went ahead and took off the oil filter already um i think what i'm gonna end up doing is throwing that oil filter back in and letting it run on that because i looked at the inside of that oil filter and it's actually really clean that oil filter was put on literally right before the car got broken down again um because i had to remove the other oil filter and that one wouldn't come off for nothing so i had to break it so gabriel bought this one so it's a brand new oil filter um but i did have to remove it so that i could install that brass fitting down there i don't know if you can see that so that brass fitting right there is the adapter that you need when you're going to install an oil pressure gauge on one of these cars um they're not a direct bolt-in because uh I believe if I remember correctly, the back of the block is uh, British. Like it's a British standard, whatever, pipe thread, whatever. And then usually when you get these aftermarket uh, oil pressure gauges and stuff like that, um, like in this case, he got a glow shift. The sending unit that they usually send you is like 1 8th NPT. So you have to get an adapter. It doesn't matter what brand gauge you get. You're going to have to get that adapter regardless of the fact. Um, so here's all the wiring. And uh, I had told him too, because when we went to install it, I was like, usually every single oil pressure sensor has the uh, 1 8 MPT thread, not 1 8 BP ST or whatever, BSPT, whatever the hell it's called. Um, so every single time you do an aftermarket one of these, you're going to have to get an adapter. So, but yeah, so now that we got that adapter in place, <clears throat> I should be able to just take this thing. I'm not going to put thread sealing or anything on it. Cause as you can see, it comes with some from the factory already. And let me see, just get my hand down under here. It's a bit of a pain on your car. It shouldn't be this difficult because, uh, you might not have this breather system if you have the breather system that i put in this car then you're gonna you're probably gonna have a a difficult time but on a stock honda it's not that bad because you don't have this giant breather hose right here getting in your way I don't know if there's anybody out there that's actually interested in like learning how to install this glow shift gauge but real simple you guys already saw the part that i did behind the um the block over there uh the next part after that is you have to run the wire that gives the oil pressure reading in the car i usually do that through this grommet right here 
And then um, I don't normally, like in my own cars, I don't normally ever use the digital gauges. I just use the analog gauges because um, I don't really chase oil pressure like that. I usually just make sure that the oil pressure is like at a decent number. The analog gauges are uh, more than good enough of um, letting you know if your oil pressure is decent or not. Um, so I usually just run analog gauges where you're just running just a line in here basically um, from that feed over there. But so, yeah, so the wire is there. There's gonna be another power wire that you're gonna have to do. In this case, he's got his wideband installed right here. So I'm gonna button that up before the show, obviously. So it's not just like hanging there like that. It'll look cleaner. And uh, the only reason I did that was just so that that could be tucked away, like over in a corner real quick, because in my car, I have my wideband here and I have my, uh, I have my boost gauge there and I have my oil pressure up here. So, <clears throat> Um, this one isn't on boost, obviously, so I just threw the wide band up there, and then I'm gonna yank the cruise control out and throw that in there. And then my boost gauge when I bought the car, the boost gauge was already there. And there's like a little bypass thing that you have to do, um, so that your dimmer, your cluster always stays on. Because once you unplug that, um, your dimmer switch, if that's unplugged, your cluster won't turn on at all. So if you have that issue that a lot of Integras and Hondas and stuff like that do where your cluster doesn't turn on, it's usually because your dimmer switch is bad. Um, so what I do is I just put a switch in there with a 30 amp resistor built in and I just have that like tucked away in there um, so that there's no issues. And then every time my headlights come on, my dimmer just automatically comes on. So, but yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and tuck that away in here. I already took out this bottom panel that goes down here and the reason you need to do that is so you can route your wiring up here and then route whatever other wiring it is that you are gonna do so like in this case um obviously that wire is just gonna get plugged in and then the power wire to make the gauge light up i'm probably just gonna end up jumping off the dimmer since the dimmer's right there so you're gonna have to take this out your cluster bezel thingy and then that'll give you access in here to like whatever wires and stuff you need so i'm just gonna end up unplugging that and then uh, i'll tap into that to get lighting over to the uh to the glow shift gauge so i'll show you guys all right so i know it's kind of hard to see y'all um so basically bezel's already out as you can see you can access everything in here uh, disconnected the cruise control plug right here and then essentially what you're gonna do is just put your hand behind and just push out And that's it No more cruise control All right, y'all. So it's 11:30 right now and uh, This is how far we've gotten If you are gonna try to do this method a lot of people don't know that when you do take that out You are gonna have to enlarge in the hole the gauge doesn't just pop in it might look like you just pull that out and drop the gauge in but it doesn't quite work that way so you will have to do some cutting um and it is kind of hard to get in here and do it cleanly if you have your steering wheel on if you have time to take the steering wheel and all and like your switches and stuff off you can do it the way that i did it was uh i kind of finagled a drill right through here at just the right angle um with a hole saw and uh <clears throat> so that's what i used there and then, uh, so basically what you end up with is pretty much a perfectly sized hole. And then this guy just goes in there just like that. And then I usually don't worry too much about the edges being rough. I mean, you do want it to be like as clean as possible, but what ends up happening is once you push this in, the bezel just kind of hides everything for the most part. So you don't really even notice it. And... So that's pretty much it. So that's how that gauge is gonna sit in there. And then, like I said, the wiring, we're just gonna go ahead and tap in to the plug over here uh, to get our light set up. Um, if I can get, this is the cruise control here with my power probe. If I can tap into here and I can find something that turns on uh, with the ignition, I could just tap into this. Um, so basically this will just light up every time you turn the car on. So since the cruise control isn't going to really be used anymore um it's not really going to draw like any extra amperage or anything like that so that should be fine to do there so we'll see what happens but if i can't get what i'm looking for here then i'm just going to have to tap into the dimmer over here which turns on every time we turn the lights on um which that might be more appealing anyways because like during the day 
there's like no reason for your light to be on in the gauge here, I guess. But um, you might not see it anyway, so it might not really matter. So we'll see what ends up happening here. All right, so as y'all can see, it's lit up right there. Um, <clears throat> and then when you turn the uh, light switch, it dims out a little bit just so it's not so in your face at night. What I ended up doing was, um, <clears throat> I'm pretty sure I talked in the last clip about drilling out the hole saw here, or the hole with the hole saw here. And then, um, so this thing has two wires in the back. One of them, I believe the bottom one, yeah, that three pin is coming directly off your oil pressure switch on the uh, back of the block there. And then this one right here has all your power wires. So you've got red, yellow, uh, orange, and black. Obviously black is ground. So I just ran that one into the uh, the ground for the, let me see, where did I run that ground to? Oh, I ran it over here. It's hooked up to the ground of the dimmer because I basically got the, uh, I basically got the, uh, there's a, like a light source you need to tap into, see orange headlight switch source. So the dimmer is the headlight switch source. So I tapped into the, uh, I put the orange wire, which is the illumination wire there, just like a radio, uh, to the red on here. And then the ground there also. And then this is a 12 volt constant source. Um, actually, no, this is a switch source here. The red goes to a 12 volt switch source. So it only works like anything that's black and white in these cars usually is uh, on the same circuit as your ignition switch. So that's gonna be a 12 volt source with your ignition switch. And then you need a 12 volt constant, which is this yellow here. And just like a radio, that's basically a memory wire. So what that ends up doing is, uh, since this is a seven color changeable, it's got this button here. So you can change the colors. If you don't wire in that yellow one, it's always gonna default to the dark blue, which is like the first color. So now with, uh, with this, like say I wanna run that like white looking color. Actually, let's do something more noticeable. Let's say we do like green. So now when I key off, gauge is off, take the key out, it lights up green. Without that uh, yellow, it would default back to the first blue. And so basically every time you turn your car on, you have to change the color again. So that's why uh, that's why you gotta run that one. Um, now I ended up having to take the whole interior apart because for whatever reason, I can't take Gabriel's radio out. And uh, that thing is like in there like really good and i thought i could get to the back of the harness from here but i can't um so what i ended up doing was on the hazard plug um this cable right here is actually a constant 12 volt whether the key is on or off this is a 12 volt here so what i ended up doing was just extending it with a red wire here ran that up through here to the yellow wire up top there and that's it so we got our 12 volt constant and all that does is it basically just sends like a small amount of voltage to the programmer in here and it keeps it set at whatever setting you have it set at. If you don't care, if you're gonna run that default blue anyways, which it looks pretty badass, it's this color right here, that's that's what it turns on to automatically anyways. If that's what you're gonna run, you don't need to hook up to a 12 volt source. You could just run the yellow and the red to a, uh, um, to a, uh, like just a switch source and then it'll just turn on blue every single time but if you want to run a different color then you're gonna to have to hook up that yellow to a constant 12 volt source so even if the car is off it can keep the memory for whatever color you choose so just keep that in mind all right so oil filter Everything is back on, got oil in the car. Uh, topped it off with water for now because I want to do a flush. There you go, you see we got oil pressure. Gauge is working how it should be working, so lights off, it gets brighter. Lights on, it gets dimmer. So that's good. Don't mind all the smoke, that's just like water and oil contamination and everything that we kind of put our hands on 
when we're working on it. So that's normal either after a fresh build or a head gasket or any kind of big repair, you're usually gonna have smoke and stuff like that burning off the headers and the block and whatnot. Gotta love Florida. Sitting here looking over and doesn't say anything about rain on the forecast, but it's starting to drizzle over my head now. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, look around, make sure we don't have any leaks and stuff like that. I'm gonna let this thing idle, make sure that the fix that we did with the valve seals actually did what it's doing and it's not uh, leaking from the exhaust anymore. So we're gonna go ahead and let it warm up, get it up to operating temperature. We'll give it a few revs and stuff like that and then as soon as I get a chance, I'm gonna take it for a spin. I'll double check the tune on the computer, make sure everything's good. And uh, I'll probably just take it for a ride over to like Wawa to put some air in the tires and I'll check the AFRs. If the AFRs are similar to where I tuned it before, I'll just let it be. And uh, I'll do a more in-depth tune later on. Y'all a quick update. So I am tired as hell. Today has been a crazy day. Um, you see me install that oil pressure gauge and uh, when I turned on the car to make sure everything worked. I guess I forgot to push one of the cam seals, the intake cam seal, like all the way in. So it just started like pouring out oil. So I just finished taking everything apart again, putting it back together. And uh, yeah, so now I'm gonna go ahead and start it and make sure that uh, everything works how it's supposed to. And if it does, um, I'm gonna finish topping off the cooling system, make sure that there's no leaks and I'm gonna take it for a drive. I'll probably take it to the gas station or something to fill up the tires on it and make sure everything works good. I'm also gonna watch the AFRs and see what the AFRs are looking like, seeing if I really do need to tune it again or not. Um, if it's good enough to go to the fuel fest like this, I won't waste any time because I need to get to my car. Um, but if the AFRs are like way off with the new cams, then I'll go ahead and do a tune probably tomorrow when I get home from work. So, but let's see what happens. All right, y'all, so it's the next day. I am exhausted, as y'all can tell from that last clip. Um, I wasn't able to do everything that I wanted to do with the car because the radiators wasn't holding up. So Gabriel actually just called me. He dropped off a new radiator at the house. So I'm gonna close out this video here because the video is already rather long. It's over 20 minutes. Um, I'm going to try to upload as much as I can this week because we do have Fuel Fest this Saturday and I kind of want you guys to like follow along and just see how it is that we are going to prep for this show and hopefully a lot of you guys that watch are local and you'll be able to see the cars in person at the show. Um, so yeah, so today when I get home, the game plan is going to be to replace the radiator in uh, Gabriel's car and then uh, we're going to top it off with water, not coolant. Um, I want to go ahead and get water running through the block and stuff like that so we can clean out any oil residue or anything that might have fallen in there when we swap the head out. And then, uh, yeah, just get that thing on a uh, on a decent tune so that way he can start daily driving it again and he can enjoy his car again. And then we also have to change out the door handles and the mirrors. So I'm going to be recording that. Hopefully by that time this video is posted up, you guys can watch this video and then... Um, hopefully everything works out and we can be done with his car today and then that'll basically just leave me to take the exam that i have to take for school and then hopefully tomorrow i can start on my car which like i said it's nothing too crazy it's just there's going to be a little detailing and a little painting that we're going to have to do on my car but again it's not ultimately necessary so we'll see we'll just kind of play it by ear so with that being said uh Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you like the video, make sure you like, subscribe to follow us on the road to Fuel Fest, and uh, and so you can watch the actual event. Because I am gonna be, uh, I'm actually gonna be posting on my stories. I'll probably do a live, so make sure you follow me on my Instagram. I'll go ahead and link that in the description. It's also in the bio of the channel. And with that being said, I'll check you guys out later.